Here we go, let's take a look at example number two of our simple mole-to-mole -mole stoichiometry problem. We're dealing with the exact same balanced equations, so that's why I've already got it down here for you. Hopefully you guys worked ahead on this one and were able to try it out. You can see we have a slightly different set of um, chemical compounds to deal with as for what we've been given versus what we're looking for. We've been given an amount here of silver nitrate again. It's a slightly different amount, 0 0.220 moles. All right, get in the habit of writing that in the columns underneath the various things. Include the units too, those are really important, especially as we start doing a lot of our unit conversion. And in this one, we're told we reacted with an excess amount of CaCl2. But the question goes on to ask us, how much was actually used in mole? So we're still looking for moles of CaCl2, even though we know it's the excess reagent. So I can use stoichiometry to find information about products. I can use it to find information about other reactants as well. It can be used for any part of the equation. Now, since we already have moles, we remember, all right, that we have our starting quantity, so we can go straight to stoichiometry. There's no conversions necessary if we've been given a mole quantity. So I start off with that, 0 0.220 moles, and I write down the species, AgNO3. I now have a fraction to multiply through, but my mole fraction for this example is going to be different than the previous because the entities involved are different. So I don't want AgNO3. I already know its molar amount, so I will treat it like a unit and cancel out by putting it on the opposite side of the fraction. And I'm trying to learn about CaCl2. And then what we have to do is put in our mole ratio for what these guys were in the equation. When you look at it, it takes two parts AgNO3 for every one part CaCl2 to produce our products in the balanced equation. So two parts here, one part here, or if you like, two moles there, one mole there. And we now have uh, our mole ratio, which is the stoichiometry. Guys, right here, just kind of bubble it in. That's stoic, that's, that's all it is. Any other stuff that we do in this unit is just going to be unit conversions beyond this. So I put this in here to help simplify what has to cancel and what our mole fraction should look like. If you look at the remaining units, I have moles of calcium chloride. So now I just need to run this through my calculator. 0 0.220 times one is still 0 0.220 divided by two works out to 0 0.110 moles of CaCl2. And there we go, moles to moles calculations are super simple. Highly unrealistic for most chemistry, you wouldn't see it in lab, you wouldn't see it on too many test questions. We'll give you a couple just to make sure that you can do pure stoic, but realistically the measurements that we get are much different and have uh, different units involved with them. And we see that down here with the first one, which we're getting into gravimetric stoic, uh, stoichiometry. And when you think gravity, we tend to think mass and weight. So hence that. It says when producing rust, iron three oxide, right there, from iron and oxygen, what mass of iron will react? So we're looking for a mass of iron with 1.56 moles of O2. So again, I've organized it underneath and I can see that I'm going from moles to mass. Stoic only goes from moles to moles when we look at that mole fraction, so this means that there's going to be a conversion on our finishing end. So let's take a look at what that looks like. Before we do that, we do need to balance this equation. There's two parts iron. All right, so, and we have three parts oxygen, so I'll have to triple this, double this to get to the common multiple of six. That gives me four parts iron, so I'll need a four there. So in the rusting of iron, it's four moles iron requires three moles oxygen to produce two moles of rust. All right, where do we begin? Well, we have a mole quantity from something that is given to us, and we're being asked for what mass of iron is required to use all of this. So start out again. We've been keeping it easy so far with the mole quantities, and you have one mole or pardon me, 1.56 of moles of O2. 
since you have moles, it is the appropriate time to go to that mole fraction. And so when you look at the information that we had, I'm trying to use oxygen to learn about iron. So oxygen on the opposite side of the fraction to cancel, iron goes up top. And you can see that it's four parts iron for every three parts oxygen. Oxygen now cancels. You have moles of iron, which is fantastic, but you're looking for mass of iron. So now we have the conversions, and we've seen some of this stuff in earlier units. For here, I can do a unit conversion. I'm going to draw it in another color just to show it that this is no longer stoichiometry, but it's the necessary unit conversions that go along with using these mole fractions. So I have moles of iron, so moles should go on the bottom, and what, pray tell, is the conversion between mass of something and its mole quantity? You're right, it's molar mass, and so I just need the molar mass of iron here. For every one mole of iron, it should weigh 55.85 grams on a scale. So now we have, when we look at the unit cancellations, moles are now gone, and you have grams of iron, which is what you were looking for. That is the measured mass for iron. This just needs to go through our calculator. Remember that numerators in the factor label method multiply, denominators divide. So one of the ways that we might enter this one into our calculator here, if we were to try it, is to start with 1.56 moles. I'll multiply by 4. I can divide that by 3. And then I can multiply by 55.85. I get 116.168, and this would be grams of iron. This obviously needs to be fixed for sig digs, and so here you have three sig digs. Molar mass gave us four from the periodic table. These are whole numbers, so they don't uh, limit it, and so it's a three-digit answer where the one rounds down, and so therefore 116 grams of iron are required to rust. 1.56 moles of oxygen. Okay, there's two examples. You can see the subtle differences. All right, moles to moles was no problem. There's our stoichiometry. This one had an extra step of converting the mole amount of iron into a gram amount. And so we just kept along with what our unit conversions are. In gravimetric stoichiometry, expect to see the use of molar mass quite a bit because it is our um, conversion that we learned between the mass of a substance, and its associated moles. All right, two more examples to go. We'll see those in uh, the next video, and we move on from here.